is going to show you how to do unattended access. Let's say if you're working from home, and this is in March, late March 2020, and you know, a lot of people are working from home or they may have a computer back at home they need to access when they're not there, whenever time or whatever place it is. Now don't do this with your work computer unless it's, you know, it's your company or it's a small company and you have permission specifically to do this because this could get you, you know, you don't want to set up remote access without permission in most businesses. That could be, you know, something that could get you, you know, terminated. But I had another video about giving one-off support. This is going back to the Chrome remote desktop and this, they really don't have any uh, restrictions on this other than it needs to be in a Google account. And that could be a business Google account, like so Google Apps for your domain, you know, where it's using a custom domain name and it's a paid account, but it's for Google. It works with any kind of Google account, essentially. You would go to remote.google.com, and there's two tabs. One is a temporary remote source which support, which is where I have a uh, other video about. That's where you can just help a friend temporarily, but you don't have consistent all-time access to their computer. But if you want to have full-time access to their computer, you would go to this remote access. Now, this, these are two Windows 10 virtual machines running with Chrome browser. And right now, for this video, they're logged into the same Google account. In my other video, they were logged into different accounts because it's two different people. Now, one thing about this is it doesn't really have it set up to where you give remote access to somebody in another Google account. So it's really for your own computers and your Google account. But you say you need to get back to your workstation at home or in an office place and you need to, you know, from your Google account, your computer that you control and you need to access, this is a good way to do it for free and you're not violating any, uh, any rules. Now, when you come here, you'd have to install the remote access client. So this is the computer on the left we want to control. Let's go and set it up. We click the little button. We're going to download. And sometimes Google's services seem to be running a little slow today. Let's cancel out of this right now and try this one. Okay, add this to Chrome. Look, this little pop-up, you don't have to turn on sync or anything. You just close that out. Then click this accept and install. We can click yes. If, you, sometimes, if you're running as a limited user, you may have a prompt for a password. Either way, just click yes or enter password, whichever one's applicable to you. You're going to run the little controller. It's very small, very simple. It's going to ask you what you want to call this and say this is a home computer, home or work machine. This is the computer you want to control, the one that's sitting at your home, your office, or whatever. When clicking it, you have to choose a PIN number. So that I'm just going to, for this, don't do this number yourself. I'm just going to put 123, 123, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, this is a personal choice. You can uncheck this if you're worried about Google collecting statistics. This does help them, you know, see when it crashes or doesn't work well so they can make it better. So, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it checked here. And then click Start. I'm going to accept that. And it's starting the remote access. One good thing about this is that once you have this set up, you don't have to have the Chrome browser open all the time. Um, you do have, the computer needs to be on though, so like if you had a work computer or a computer you need to access from at home, that's when you're away, just set the power settings to where it never turns off. But now, let me come, I'm a, say I'm at a remote place, I'm going to refresh this so I see, now I see the machine. Now look, I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to close Chrome on this computer. And um, now I'm going to come to the remote computer, I just click on the name of the computer I want to control. I have to enter the PIN number I put in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, enter something else in that. If you don't want to have to hit the PIN number and you trust that you're the only one who can get that computer, you can click this checkbox to get straight in without entering this every time, but I'm just not going to check it right now. Let me hit yes, and bam, there it is. Now, I have control of my remote. So I'm over here remotely I'm working and you see whatever I do, I'm actually controlling that remote computer. So
So, and then when I'm ready, I can just disconnect from it. And also, and this applies to the uh, to the other one too. You know, you have you can go full screen mode. You can scale to fit. If they have multiple monitors, you can display which one. There's only one monitor in these, but you know you can display them. There's all kind of other features. Oh, you even have you know you can upload files. And there's just problem is there's nothing on this computer because it's just a dummy one. But you could transfer a file over. And um, let's just make a text folder. Oh, okay. I made it on the other machine, so I'd have to click download a file. Desktop. There it is. And I got it to this remote computer. So you can even file share files here. So it's really pretty impressive software. And it's, you know, it's free. And that's all there is to it. And then, you know, next time you needed to get to it, you would just go back through the process again. You don't, you don't need anybody on the other end accepting it. Enter your pin or remember it, and right back you go. And you can always click here too to stop sharing. And that's all there was to it.